Hello and welcome. In this demonstration video I'm going to show how to refuel in BMS 433. And the reason I've chosen to do this video um, is because I believe that 433 is a good bit indifferent. Uh, the developers would say improved and I would agree over uh, 432. And a couple of dish differences I've noticed so far is one is that the fuel rate appears to be slower so it takes a lot longer to refuel so you're on the boom for longer Two in position. and that's a challenge in itself the second one is that when you're on the boom you no longer feel like you're being held into a slot in which small movements of the the input devices have no impact on um, your position now it's it's very similar to DCS when refueling in that you're flying all the time whether you're on the boom or not so once you're connected and you've got the green light you really have to continually trim your aircraft in order to maintain your position on the boom so with that said I'm going to uh, contact it AWACS and we'll see where the tanker is I'm going to demonstrate also very quickly um, voice attack and since uh, using it for Elite Dangerous, I've now swapped over from VAC to Voice Attack for BMS. And I've changed the, the approach rather than having to remember all the commands. I just have to remember the um, command menu headings. And then I follow it with a command. So most of the commands are two-part. And this is very useful, but I would highly recommend um, Voice Attack. It's also um, important that you have some way of talking to the tanker without having to take your hand off the stick because you do have to do it at crucial moments in the, refu in the refueling process and voice attack comes in very good for this I think it's quite inexpensive okay so I'm gonna talk to AWACS AWACS Vector Four in position. Vector to tanker Chalice 2, Cowboy 1-1, one, one. request Vector to tanker Cowboy 1, Chalice 2, Tanker, Diamond 1, Bullseye 115, 1, 120 miles. Back and channel, United Yankee. So 115 for 120 miles and from Bullseye. So let's focus on the HSI to find that. So I know it's somewhere in our track here. So we rotate to 115. There's 115 on the Courser. 115, there's 100 miles. 115, there's. So it's pretty, very, it looks like it's pretty close to 0.3. So I'm going to come up to steer point three, and I'm going to head in that direction. And when we roll out of the turn, I'm going to set up our TACAN. And one point to note about the TACAN is, TACAN only shows bearing and distance information for the KC-10, which is the, it's, it's the model of the DC-10, the one with the three engines. For all other refueling aircraft it will only show the distance measuring equip measuring information so it will only show you bear di show you distance and I'll demonstrate this in action we're currently uh, intercepting a, a non KC-10 tanker it's based on the 707 so we're now heading in that general direction we have a few contacts out in front of us but I'm going to switch on the TACAN first of all I ch choose the ILS button up here and I'm going to dobber to the right to change from air to, to change from transmit receive to air to air and now I'm going to type in the, the channel number which is 29 enter that you can see it's updated here and then I'm going to change the X band to the Y band by clicking on 0 and pressing enter again so we're all set now and I'm going to leave that page. I'm going to have a quick look at these contacts, and I know my uh, target is at 20, should be at 24. So it's not those guys there. So more than one of them, but it might be this guy at 26. And I'm going to, I'm going to soft lock him, and I'm going to request again. Hey, Max Vector, Vector the tanker. Chalice 2, Cowboy 1-1, one, one. request Vector to Tanker. Cowboy 1, Chalice 2, Tanker, Diamond 1, Bullseye 1-1-5, one, one, 140 miles. Pac-Am Channel, okay. 
that's not him because that's uh, 119 for 100 miles so try the next one 17 for 100 miles so and that's not him either so we haven't found him yet we're gonna come out a bit more come on to steer point three That's that looks more like him. So he's at 24. So I call it again. Eric Spector. Spector to tanker. Chalice two, cowboy one one. Request Spector to tanker. Cowboy one, Chalice two, tanker. Diamond one, bullseye one one five one hundred forty miles. Back one one five for one forty is shown up as one one six for one thirty one. So that's close enough. So I'm guessing that's our guy because there's not that much too many other things out here. No, I can't see him. Can't see him clearly enough to identify whether he's a tanker or AWACS, but he's a big aircraft. So let's head in his direction anyway. So we're pretty much set up to um, to intercept. And I'm going to burn some fuel because I want to empty our tanks a little bit to be able to refill. I know it's a bit of a contradiction to be uh, burning after burning fuel in order to meet a tanker, but uh, it's only for demonstration. Also note that I've got a full load out here of four GBU-12s and two GBU-31s, the big ones, and also um, a 300 gallon tank on the center line. So I'm pretty well laden down and our, our contact speed is gonna be around 400 knots and it's, that's because we're so high in altitude, 24, ages 24. If we were down lower, 13 or 12 or 13, we'd probably be down around 300 knots. And this altitude is probably unrealistic um, in a normal environment because if you were, if the tanker was supporting um, a cast aircraft like the A-10s and so on, they'd certainly be wanting to tank at a lower altitude. They wouldn't want to be. Um, having to spend all their time and effort getting up high. Cap aircraft here, on the other hand, maybe, you know, they, they're more likely to be staying up at this altitude. So I've got a better visual on him now. Okay, he's coming in our direction, so we should intercept him, okay. I maintain the lock, the soft lock, so I can see him. Don't lose sight of him until he gets big enough that I'm not going to lose him. I'm using single screen for this video, but I normally um, use a triple screen, so the likelihood of me losing him is, is lower, because with three screens it gives um, a, a good bit more situational awareness. I'd recommend it to anybody who can uh, justify it. So here we go. Now I need to be starting to turn. In this altitude. Okay, there he is. I could request fuel at this stage, in fact the, you can request fuel, f fuel from a good distance out, I think it's probably, certainly it's well beyond 10 miles, but um, I'll wait until I get in there, inside the 10 mile range. I'm uh, constantly recentering my track IR, so I hope it's not too distracting on the video. Gonna dumb down my head up display so I can have a clearer picture of the tanker. And now I'm gonna talk to him. Tanker, request fuel. Diamond 1 1, Cowboy 1 1, I could use some fuel. Cowboy 1 1, Diamond 1 1, copy. 
Okay, so I've authorized now to move in close. And when I reach pre-contact position... When I reach pre-contact position, I've then got to... Um, talk to him again. So, we're on the... We're on the turn now, and I can use this as an opportunity to get in close, but I have a couple of things that left to be done, first of all. I'll switch off this light here, so that I can see my um, function display easier. I'm going to open our fuel tank, fuel reserve, uh, sorry, the uh, air, air fueling valve. And I'm going to change to the bingo page on the DD by clicking on list 2. And this gives me the benefit of being able to see how much fuel I have on board and I've, I'm taking on without having to look down at the fuel gauge down to the right here so I can keep in contact with the tanker while I'm doing that. So you may choose to uh, soft lock the target or soft lock the, um, the aircraft here in order to get an idea of your closure rate but I'm I have a fair idea what it is anyway so I don't need to do that. You can see the ready light indicates that my my refueling door is open, and it's modelled on BMS 4.3. Let me have a look outside. Okay, I just pause that. Okay, so you can see it's open there. So a lot of additional control surfaces are modeled very well on DCS, in including the control surfaces on the tanker in front of us. You can actually see the ailerons while he's pitching into the turn. A little bit, fo a little bit far out to do it now, but if we zoom in, you can see them there. Just about see them there on the right. Nice sunny morning here for refueling with uh, clear weather. Okay, looks like he's starting to roll out now. So I'm going to come in close. I've increased the volume on my um, external sound, so you can hear when I when I'm twitching on my air brakes and off. We're down to six thousand pounds. We're going to talk to him again now, tanker. Ready to take fuel. Diamond one one, cowboy one one, stabilized and ready. Okay, so that's the that's the second stage, and now we have to go through a third stage, which is we have to stabilize behind the boom. And um, this is a tricky enough part um, because you have to you have to hold still as if you were under the tanker, except you're behind the boom until you get a clearance. Now I'm I'm feeling a little bit of turbulence there. Hoping it's not too much um, when we go to connect. So let's move in. Not too quickly. I'm say I'm too fast there. 416. I'm looking for about 411. So. And the boom doesn't move until I'm cleared to contact, and the lights don't go on. And it's only then you won't get. You won't hook onto the tanker unless you've got that clearance. So trying to get under it is a waste of time. You've got to get in behind the boom and hold on until you get that clearance. Now I'm hoping to get it. There Cowboy, it is now. One one, diamond, one one. Clear to contact position. Okay, so now the lights are on and I now can start moving into position. Got 
too fast. Don't want to slow down too much. So I'm in a good position here now. I can move back. Four eleven, four ten. I'll slide back a little bit, not too far, not too much. Okay. So the light on the right hand side you saw it there flashing, it's telling me to move back. Gone too far forward. So I've got to get into a sweet spot to allow them to hook up and then I get the indications. So that should be good. I can hold it there. Contact. There's a contact. Now you see the lights come on here and the lights gone on underneath. Now I've got to keep the greens up. Um, it's, it's telling me I'm too high and I'm too far back. I need to go forward. Okay, so I need to too far. I need to move forward a little bit. Don't overcook it because you'll end up going too far. So I'm just um, flying the jet to try and keep the green lights on. It's kind of like a game. And it's constant manoeuvring. Can't just sit here and uh, hope to stay in that position all the time. So very slight movements of my throttle there. Cowboy, 1-1, one, one, Diamond, 1-1. One, one. It's up. Tanker is entering turn. Okay, now this is the challenge. It's very difficult to stay on when he starts turning. And I was hoping to get to the 7,900 pounds before that. Okay, he's going to start moving and I'm going to get out of position. Move forward a little bit. Down. No. Impossible. So, I need to just come back ever so slightly here. Being careful that all my guys are on the port side. And they generally come into a very tight formation while waiting to refuel while lining up. So I'll stay in this position until he rolls out. 7,880. I don't think it's worthwhile actually going in again. That's as close as I'm going to get. So I'm going to I'm going to call that a win, and I'm going to move out to the right. And last thing I've got to do is tell him I'm finished. Tanker, done refueling. Diamond, 1-1, ready. Roger. So that gives clearance Cowboy, for... 1-2, Diamond, 1-1, clear to contact position. Number two, to move in. And... If I was in a straight turn there, I'd just simply slide out to the right and maintain uh, the same speed so that I stay within a formation of the tanker. And I'll be forced out to the contact. port side. And the others will, the, uh, the flight will join me in sequence as they complete their formation. I also noticed that it takes the AIs, and these are AIs, it takes the AIs longer to connect when the tanker is in a turn. And I suppose it's an indication of the, the, the challenge. Yeah, you can see the uh, control surfaces on the tanker there. Oh, the modeling on this is just so good. I look at the detail on that. And so, so smooth. Everything is so smooth. So I need to be careful now. In the last take of this video, I was doing pretty good until uh, my number two disconnected and I'll have to blame him he collided with me so he's gone he's gone under me there he is okay so I'm gonna move in position here I think there's a bit of uh, Turbulence here, not too much, but shaking around a little bit.
this is quite a challenge to remain in this formation and it's a worthwhile um it's worthwhile practice to remain in this formation while uh, the rest of the flight is tanking being conscious of where everybody is in relation to you and maintain the speed with alongside the tanker I should have closed my valve Follow back a little bit. Diamond one one fueled. Okay, number three Roger. is done. Cowboy one four. Diamond one one. Clear to contact position. So you can see about seven thousand five hundred. It was almost seven thousand nine hundred. So we were probably going to lose about five hundred while waiting on the guys to refuel and considering we probably Contact. only needed about 2,000 pounds if you were if you were more empty um, I'm guessing it would take longer but the benefit if you were in a LAN and everybody was real pilots you could decide how much fuel you needed because if you were only heading to home plate you would only need to take on enough to get you home So as soon as he's finished, they'll break off to the right and we'll reform with him. Oh, look at that. That's just so smooth. I'm really looking forward to trying this out in multiplay. This requires a lot of accurate flying and a good bit of discipline. It must be nearly full now. On the order you are there. Roger. Okay, everybody's the way. So going to request them to come back in formation. There they go. They'll start forming up at me now. <coughs> Got to get them to close up. Flight formation one. Close it up. Cowboy one, close it up. Okay, I hope you found this useful and. Uh, interesting Two, um, I can't say enough uh, good things Three. about Four. I can't say enough good things about BMS I'm uh, thoroughly enjoying it it is still and continues to be despite the Nevada map coming along and I've had a quick look at that in a uh, BMS or in DCS it is still for me the king of si sims and 4.33 has made it significantly better so I'd advise anybody who hasn't tried it and is interested in military sims flight sims um, definitely download it and Two, give it a try position. remember it's pretty much it's free um, so enjoy hope you enjoyed the video and as usual if you have any comments feel free and until the next time thanks